The questions of ego and consciousness, the self and the persona, are often uncomfortable. It is easy enough to answer as you. You are those things which define the sense of being. But on closer inspection, they are made of fragments, byproducts of upbringing, genetics, environment, social conditioning, experience, health. The process of cultivation of an ego occurs over the course of a lifetime. There is no singular source of identification that can be labeled as the ego or the persona. It is a collection of these things, segmented together and held in place by mental acuity. Individuality is better described as a collective imago of those fragments. All this is sounding very nebulous, so let us exercise the imagination to paint some meaning. The point of all this will become apparent shortly. If you were to visualize or draw your spirit or soul or ego, the essence of the self, how would it look? Would it resemble your physical features? Would it incorporate elements, symbols, and themes which are defining of you? Take someone who is loyal, strong, unmoving, and stubborn. Maybe they would be compared to an oak tree as embodying the qualities of that object. Someone sneaky, conniving, slippery, sharp-witted, maybe a fox or perhaps a rat. Maybe someone is bright and powerful like the sun, or mysterious and transient like the moon, enigmatic like the ocean, or energetic like the waves, nomadic like the wind, tough as nails, sharp as an eagle. Perhaps it is more conceptual. A person may be defined as being corporate, or scholarly, or valorous, or vengeful, or a masochist, or law-abiding, or an outlaw. But in every case, you would say these of someone who lives relevant to that image. It is like the way an author describes a character in a novel. In order to put a mental image of what this character is like, their physical appearance, behavior, inclinations, and ultimately their ego, that character's sense of self, animistically living life in that subnatural world. An author uses those strategies of description to convey the soul of a character to the reader. For the exercise above, maybe put yourself as a character in your favorite novel's world. How are you described? How do the other characters perceive you? How will readers perceive you? Such extension of the mind's sense of self is a testimony to its fragmentation, to place itself outside, ignoring the limitations of its vessel, yet still being within it. I think with that understanding, this next point will be clear and easy to follow. The fragmentations of the consciousness are formed from a variety of factors. It can be projected and is totemically symbolized or described. Finally, it can be dressed or worn. Things can suffuse through the consciousness or the ego. A shade of blue may have a calming effect. The layout of an office may encourage productivity. The design of a chair may facilitate conversation. The material of clothing inspiring confidence. The comfortability of a shoe giving peace of mind. Alcohol instilling bravado and lowering inhibitions. A melody moving one to tears, the ideas of glory, fame, and love leading to the extremes of behavior. Those are examples of external influences on the fragments. What of the internal? Rather, what I am truly getting at, what of the microscopic? Microbiota pervade all things. They flow around and through the body, making up a majority of the genetic material found in a human. DNA is about 2.5 nanometers. An average microbe, such as a bacteria, is about 1 to 2 micrometers, about a thousand times larger than DNA. A sewing needle is about 1 millimeter. A human is around 1 to 2 meters, about a thousand times larger than a sewing needle. The sewing needle is approximately the same size compared to a human as DNA is to a bacteria. Symbolically, or simply poetically, microbes are weaving the threads of DNA, altering themselves, their environments, and any host. Humans and dogs share a lot of microbiota in common. The domestication of the wolf altering the microbial makeup of both man and canine. To act dog-like is to be worn by the spirit of the dog, taking advantage of the dog's weapons, its speed and ferocity. The image of the soul in that state may be compared to or resemble a doggish warrior, a werewolf, or a mad dog. The microbiota from the dog perhaps facilitates this transformation of the ego, which indeed impacts the physical capabilities, something that can be enhanced through the wearing of a dog skin, and as the microbiota moves between dog and man, it remains there, as an accessible ability any human can transition to. Someone who is graceful with quick reflexes and has deadly precision may be cat-like, their soul taking on glowing yellow eyes and a snout, 
a mane or stripes depending on the breed of cat. The microbiota, which has the memory and knowledge of the cat's system and is given full access to the ego. In some cases, the microbiota may simply assume control through possession. The influences can be subtle, just further segments comprising the full ego throughout the development of the brain and persona over the course of a life, or full-on given an alter that a particular microbiota may take full control of, whether temporarily under extreme duress or long-term in crippling illness. The ego is not stuck inside the mental space of its host. Just as conditions and ideas can ripple through the ego, so too can the microbiota which are present in all things. One can dose themselves with the microbiota of an animal, plant, or object, even another person to receive the skills and weapons of that source, carried by the microbiota. Sometimes it is for a short time, others may be more permanent as they take up residence, and still some cases may be an entire conquest of the body and ego by the newly introduced microbiota. This is not limited to humans, of course. Dogs may seem more human, and a human more like a dog. Or sensing that a tree is listening, or a bird talking to you, or the water calling to you, the wind changing at your discretion, the rain matching your mood, the walls speaking. Consciousness exists all around, in organisms, in ideas and concepts, in objects and materials, and carried by the microbiota, like tiny microscopic fragments of ego permeating all of nature and community.